Hello, Sue here from Sue's Dog Broad My Kitchen and I hope you're all well um, and not going too stir crazy with all the weirdness that we're now living. So today I wanted to make a little Welsh recipe, a really quick, uh, well I don't know if it's very quick, but, um, it's quite a lovely um, warming recipe from this little Welsh country cookery book by Bobby Freeman. Traditional recipes from the country kitchens of Wales. Wales. So I'm making something out of this little book today called Yeast Buns. I don't know how you pronounce them in Welsh, sorry. Uh, I won't even try. Anyway, so um, I've weighed out all the ingredients in front of me. So I'm actually going to just read them out to you so that you know what they are. So first of all, we have 675 grams of flour. So what I've done here is it says use wheat meal flour, so which is wholemeal flour basically. So what I've done is mix some white flour in with the with the wholemeal flour, and I've used strong flour as well. So we'll see how it works out. So that's what I've done. So that's in there. So that's 675 grams, which is one and a half pounds, quite a lot. And then it says use molasses sugar. 3 ounces or 75 grams, so I've got the molasses sugar in there, um, it's really nice molasses this one, it's um, by this Nature Energy Organic Molasses Pure Blackstrap, mm -hmm. it is lovely, I love molasses because I like licorice <laughs> and it tastes a lot like that. And then, and oh, let me just tell you that these buns are traditional to Pembrokeshire part of the New Year celebration in the past. They are best eaten warm and I think they are improved by using 85% brown flour instead of white, which is basically what I've used here. So there's 15% white flour. And that's it. So I just thought I'd better tell you where they actually, what region of Wales they actually come from originally. So, so we've weighed it out, we've got the molasses and now the butter. So we've got two ounces of butter, which is 50 grams. And by the way, all these ingredients need to be warmed. So the flour is warmed up, the butter is warmed up. I will warm up the molasses. Actually, I will do that now while we're talking. I'll just pop it in the microwave to warm it up a bit. Uh, that should be a second to do. So all the ingredients should be warmed up so it's easier to mix, apart from the egg. And then you're gonna use the butter is warmed. Well, that's warmed up because if you warm up molasses, it'll be a, it'll be easier to just shut off the microwave because it'd be interfering with the sound. So I've warmed up the molasses, so it's easier to pour it into the mixture because molasses is very thick, like treacle, black treacle. It's very very similar actually. Um, so then you, you need, I've got mixed fruit here, which is mixed vine fruit. So there's a mixture in here. So you need 50 grams of, it says sultanas and currants, but I think it doesn't really matter what you use. And then I've got one, 25 grams of candied peel or one ounce. So that's in there, that's separate. Or you could just use mixed fruit with the peel in, you know the one. And then you just need one egg, which is in here, and one pinch of salt, which I've got here. And then you need some yeast, one and a half teaspoons of dried yeast. I've already done my yeast over here. I put it in a little bit of water earlier and it's bubbling away up nicely. So it's all warmed up and it's all ready to go. So I've already activated the yeast. Um, so that's what I've done. So that's that, and that's done in some water. So I might need less of this milk here. Because then it says you need um, half a pint of milk. So this is half a pint of milk mixed with water. So I've mixed like half of it with milk and half water. But I might not use all of this because obviously I've still got some water in with the yeast here. So I probably won't use all of that because there's, um, how much is in here? Mm. 
200 mils of um, milk in here, water in there. So yeah, I probably won't need all of this, okay? I'll just play it by eye. So what you need to do is rub the butter into the warmed flour. So I've got my flour here, which I warmed up in the microwave as well. At this time of year, you have to warm everything up as well because um, it's very, very cold now. And it's very cold in my kitchen. So I have had a big cooker on all day. So the flour I'm mixing together because obviously the white flour I put at the bottom and I just used up what I had, which was about 175 grams of flour. And then I made up the rest to the, um, what was it? 675 grams with the um, with the wholemeal flour. So I'm just going to add the butter now, which I've also warmed up. So it's everything's soft and pliable, easy to go. So just mix that in with that. Oh, it's nice and warm, the flour. So just warm it up, warm everything up. It makes everything easier to use and more pliable. Um, it smells really nice, by the way. Yum, yum. So these are like um, hot cross buns, really. They're not much different. I think they're sort of basically the same. So, but they, their traditional way of using them is for New Year and not uh, Easter. So that's interesting, isn't it? I never knew that. Did you know that? So to this, you need to add, so that's the salt. So a pinch of salt and probably the fruit because you're going to put all your dry ingredients Usually that's how you do things, and then your wet ingredients. So, a pinch of salt, or a couple of pinches of salt, and then I would say mix your fruit in, because I reckon that's the way it goes. That's how it normally goes when you're doing uh, any kind of cake making or bun making. Usually, mix all the dry ingredients, and then you mix in the wet ingredients. And sometimes you mix the wet ingredients in separately like mix it all together, but I'm sure this is the way you work it. I will take a look in a minute. I have my glasses on, they're gonna slide off my face in a minute because they're really loose. But um, I need them to see when I'm reading. I can't see very well to read. Getting old, you see. I get all these things going wrong. Right, so, yeah, so now what you need to do is beat the egg into the warmed milk and stir dry ingredients into the flour, which is what I just did. And froth the yeast, I've done that, in a little warm milk, then add to the milk and egg and pour into the flour. Okay, sounds simple enough. So what I need is just a whisk, and we we'll just do it by hand. So we we'll just uh, put the egg, oh, we'll have to put it in here. Put the egg in here with the milk. I'm not going to use all this, remember? So I'll probably use that much because I've got water in here and we don't want to use too much liquid. Just in case, we can always add more liquid but you can't take it away. So, best not to add too much. And then you can see if you need any more. Right, so that's done. That wasn't very difficult, was it? So we we'll put that the milk and the egg. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to pour our yeast mixture into our egg and milk mixture. So that's done. So where do we put in the molasses? <laughs> oh, that smells lovely. Mm -mm -mm. Right, rub the butter, do, 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 beat the egg into the water, do, 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 and then add some milk and egg and pour into a well in the flour. Mix well and knead. Where do you put the... Mm, hold on, I need to figure out where you put the molasses in. Uh, molasses in. Ah, how weird. Well, we'll put it in in a minute doesn't say when to put the molasses in, so that's weird, isn't it? So, never mind, we'll put it in with this. So, we'll put that in. Oh, I hear it frothing up. I'll just uh, mix that round with a wooden spoon first. 
then I'll put the molasses in. <laughs> Doesn't say when to put the molasses in, that's strange isn't it? I think I did notice in that book before when I made something from it, it didn't um, give you the uh, all of the ingredients. So I don't know if it's a misprint when when they actually created the book. So the, the molasses is, goes in easier once it's warmed, otherwise it's really sticky and hard to get out. Whereas when you warm it up, it makes it a lot more easier to get it out of this little pot. And very, very messy. So that's it. Now, use my finger because we're going to need it in a minute anyway, so we're going to have to get our hands dirty anyway. Hello again. I just went and got some flour to put onto the worktop here because we need to knead them now. We're going to knead it now and then we're going to leave it to prove for an hour in the bowl and then we'll be back and then we'll make it into some rounds. I think it says 16 or something like that and then put them all on a baking sheet and then you let them prove again until they rise and then you put them in the oven. Just like making bread. Oh, I forgot to take my ring off, oh never mind. <laughs> so we're just gonna um, gather the ingredients together first. I'm just checking first before I take it out of here to make sure it's wet enough not to dry. So we're just putting in the molasses because um, it didn't say when to put the molasses in, which I think is really odd. Um, strange, eh? But I've put it in now anyway, so we're going to have to mix it in properly. But we might just put a tiny little bit more of the milk mixture in, uh, just to make sure it comes together properly. Right, so we're going to put this onto the floured surface now. So leave your bowl because you're going to put it in there and leave it in there for an hour until it's uh, risen, doubled in size basically. However long that takes actually, so if it takes less than an hour you can get on to the next bit which is the making them into the actual buns. So this, so this gives it a lovely colour with the molasses in it, it's got this beautiful colour look. It's like golden, like brown colour. So I need a bit more flour now. So I'll just put a bit more flour on here. On the board. Like so. But just keep kneading it. Because that's how you knead bread. It's just kneading it. So you just knead it for a bit with the with the these parts of your hand, you know past your palms <laughs> and just keep kneading it. You just turn it, fold it, knead. bun mixture on top of my cooker because at the back I've got like vents that bring out the warm air. So I'll see you again soon once that's proved. Okay? So bye for now. Hello, Sue back again from Sue's Dog Brock Wife Kitchen with an update of how we're getting on with the current bun mixture. So there it is, it's proved now. So what we're going to do is, we're going to knock it back again, then we're going to make like as many buns as we can get out of that. It says about 12, 16. I'm sure I read 16 or something like that. Anyway, it smells amazing because you can smell the molasses in it. It smells really great. It's got a beautiful colour. It's like this golden brown. It's beautiful. So what we're going to do is just knock it back a bit. And that just means kneading it again, basically. 
So that's what we're doing right now. So we're kneading our really nice soft dough and it's nice and warm. I kept it on top of the cooker where it's nice and warm. And then we're gonna turn it into the buns now. And then we have to let it rise again. So this is quite a long process. Uh, so give yourself plenty of time to do this or go and do other things while you're waiting. Because um, it is a long process, it just really is. So, yeah, so I left it to prove for about an hour um, on the cooker there, and uh, it rose to double the size, which is what it's supposed to do. So, uh, but it smells great. Mm, I can smell the molasses in it, it smells really yummy. I can't wait to eat it. I can't wait. I've never made the currant buns with. Um, molasses before so if I like them I'll be doing that again I think because I like I prefer it to because it's a natural sugar not a refined sugar because um, white sugar is refined sugar whereas molasses is a natural sugar so I would much prefer to use molasses so we'll see what they taste like um, but I'm sure they taste lovely because I do absolutely love molasses it's really gorgeous. I love the taste and the smell. Mm -mm. Anyway, so we've, we've knocked that back now. So what we're going to do is break off sections. So we'll see how many we get. So we're going to do about that sort of size. They'll probably be, they, they swell up remember, so you might not want them too big. Um, so. I'll just break them off first and see how many we get. Uh, so that's all I'm going to do right now. I'm not even counting them yet, I'm just breaking them off. These are sort of a bit clinical, so I always like a bit of bright colour on my videos and I like to wear colourful clothes as well for that reason. So, how many have I got? Quite a few. <laughs> Right, so we have, this one's a bit big, I need to break a bit off that one, equal out of them, equal them out a bit I think. Right, so we've got, so just make them into balls, that's all you need to do. You just turn them into balls, just like that, in between your hands. It doesn't have to be fussy, they don't all have to be exactly the same size. I mean if you've got a big family you might want to make like mummy and daddy a big one and then all the little children or little ones and um, you know make daddy a big one but I'm there's only me and my partner so we'll be eating these for quite a while <laughs> so but we love having homemade food I love cooking I love it I have one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's not bad, is it? So just put them out on your tray, spaced apart a little bit, like that. Social distancing for your current buns. Okay? <laughs> so a couple of inches, not a couple of um, meters. <laughs> so social distancing for your buns on your tray. Okay? There we are, all done. So what you need to do now, there you are, is just leave them in the warmth again and let them rise again. And then you put them in the oven and you bake them. And then you can coat some honey on the top so give them a nice glisten. Okay, so we'll just leave those there and I'll be back shortly with ready to put them in the oven. Okay, see you again soon, bye. Hello again, Sue here from Sue's Dobro in my kitchen. I just wanted to show you the finished product of the buns that I made from this little book here. This book here. And these are called yeast buns and they're made with wholemeal flour so they're quite brown um, and molasses. So hopefully they taste really, really nice. And I will just cut one open to see what they look like inside, shall I? So I've just uh, coated them with some honey as well, so it gives them a nice glaze on the top. And I'm just going to cut one and see what it looks like inside. 
All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's really hot. So that's what it looks like inside, okay? So it's nice and light and spongy and delicious. I can't wait to try one. My partner has been waiting to try one for ages now, so that's it. So I'm just gonna put some butter on these and we're gonna eat one. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to my channel and tell your friends and family about my channel. If there's anything that you would like me to cook, um, just leave me a message and I will put the um, ingredients of this below the video. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my video and subscribe to my channel please. And I'll, thank you and I have plenty of other videos that you could watch. I do have some, um, what are they called, hot cross buns which are basically these, but they're <laughs> so thank you for watching and goodbye for now and bye for now bye right i've done it now i just needed to finish the video <laughs> the buns buns finish now bye